I'm very happy to have another young Indian with us. Hello, everybody. Good to be back. Right now, we have with us Parvi Arora. Uh, let's listen to her. Over to you, Parvi. Yes, sir. Uh, just uh, before we start this, I'd like to mention that I'm really excited to do this. Uh, mostly because with that, I, uh, the first time when I, uh, we, we interacted for another interview, and we got to know about Witpets. I was, it has been really helpful after that since I was able to, you know, watch other people and what they have been doing because of this. Uh, to talk about myself, I am a second year undergraduate of Delhi University. I am currently pursuing economics honors. Um, since uh, the conversation is about how I got into economics and what we have been doing so far, I'll start from there. I have all uh, as a child, I had always in, been into science. And you know how when you are the eldest child of the family and you are also someone who is has been good in studies, you are expected to go toward that path. And I was into that path. Uh, there was a phase when I wanted to be a lawyer. There was a phase when I wanted to be a scientist. And I've had really big dreams about everything. I have explored every option ever. And then uh, towards the end of 10th, I realized that I enjoyed maths a lot, whereas science was something where I was struggling. And then uh, eventually, I think it was within within a week, I decided that, no, I don't want to take science. And maybe commerce seems like a better option for me right now. And when it comes to my family, they have always been very... Uh, supportive, I could say. They have just put their faith in me in a sense that whatever you want to do, you can go ahead. We are here to help you out whatever the way we can. But it makes no sense for us to uh, influence your decisions in any way. So they haven't really been involved in that sense. So it was always, always, it has been my decisions that I have followed throughout. So I chose to take commerce and we were the COVID batch. Both the years we were at home, but I I uh, genuinely enjoyed studying economics, especially at that time I was enjoying my enjoying microeconomics a lot, and then uh, Indian development as well. So then came the time to apply for colleges, and it was the first time we were all giving CUET. Uh, I think along with CUET, I was also preparing for Indian Statistical Institute. Bachelor's in statistics because I was sure that there were two to three degrees that I wanted to do. One was a BSc in mathematics, another one was BSc in statistics, and then there was economics. So I started with ISI. I was preparing for it, but I wasn't very aware about it, and I did not know that it's. I mean, I would say it is. It is. It is a challenge. Yes. So I couldn't crack it at that time, but I did get CUT and. Uh, I got into Kalindi College and I chose economic honors as my first priority because I think after stats and mathematics, economics made more sense. And now today, if you ask me, I think economics made the most sense. I am glad I did not choose mathematics or statistics. Even though I do enjoy statistics, I think economics is something that is much more thorough. We do study stats here and there's, uh, there's maths, but then there's also worldly knowledge that I think I would have liked that if I was pursuing some other degree. So yeah, uh, we started economics honors and I would say it was something that came as a surprise because when you move on from 12th to undergrad, there's a lot of difference in what you study. So it was a challenge at first, but then I think now I enjoy it quite a lot. Uh, also because uh, I think so there's always been uh, this urge in me to do something that is out of ordinary. And then there was always this feeling that, you know, there are so many lakhs of students who are studying in Delhi University, maybe at, in better colleges at, uh, than me, those who are performing better than me. So there was, I just, I just, I had this urge to have an edge somewhere. So uh, I also came across actuarial science. Uh, I think one place where I've been lucky at is uh, having mentors. Throughout my life, I have had people who have guided me through stuff. So, uh, the, uh, so my sir, he mentioned virtual science to me and how it is something that I could do along with my degree. And uh, yeah, so I started preparing for it as well. 
uh, I face challenges. So maybe I think I'll talk a little more about extra science before I move forward. Uh, I started the preparation. So you were saying something. <laughs> I was just laughing that, you know, economists think that actuarial science is the dullest subject. But you seem to be enjoying it. I wanted to not say it, but you made me say it. As they say, it is statistics without a personality. And it is well known that statistics has no personality. Anyway, you are enjoying it. It's not my show. Go ahead. Uh, I enjoy it actually very much, but there are so many reasons to love it. You get financial stability. There is the subjects are so interesting. I wanted to study stats, and the first subject to study here is stats, and then comes the mathematical, financial mathematics. Even that is very. Okay. It's just something that it's a ride that you enjoy. And then third thing, it's my favorite. Every time I talk about computer science, and someone asks, you know, what it is, and then I say this. You know, it's a subject that makes you feel powerful because in the life that is so uncertain, you get to learn how to calculate life expectancy and how you can make wise financial decisions while you are doing all of that. <clears throat> My sir says that, you know, once you have studied textual, no one can con you. You know, you become <laughs> that trained in financials and in uh, life well. So yeah, actual science, uh, I started start preparing for it in 12th. And then I th there are two societies, right? There's uh, Indian society, IAI, and then there's IFOA, that is the UK society. Initially, my plan was to do it from Indian society. So I cleared ASET, their admission test, that is there. And then I think I found it really, I mean, the resources are a bit scarce right now when it comes to studying the subject. So I faced uh, initial difficulties in that. And then there came a phase where uh, I started this. Uh, I started working with an NGO. And then I was in three to four societies. And then I was doing economics honors. This is semester two we are talking about. And I got so, I think that was the initial phase where I got so burned out that I didn't have the energy to even look for more resources, even look for more places where I could, you know, take help from to clear the exam and so I gave up for I think four to five months I put it on rest but then again I think I was just passing through somewhere and there was this uh, a board of actual some coaching and then I talked to this person she was a counselor and she helped me through it and then eventually I started preparing for it again and now recently only in April I gave my first exam and uh, my second exam would be in September so my plan is to for now clear these two exams, and then prepare for master's. Again, I have not given up on ISI. I want to get into ISI. Maybe I couldn't do it in bachelor's, but I think uh, for master's, I want to do MSQE from ISI. So then I'll move on to that. Since it will be my third year now, so I'll prepare for that, and then continue with my actual science when I, once I have gotten into or decided where I want to do my master's for. Masters, I want to pursue in economics itself because I feel that actuarial science and economics has been sitting very well for me. They have, uh, I mean, um, actuarial science has helped with my degree and my degree has helped and it's like vice versa. So, yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much it about actuarial science. Uh, I'm hoping that someday I want to clear the 30 papers that are there, but it feels like a challenge right now again. But I hope to do that. And that is who I want to be. That is what I aspire to be. And actually, and uh, yeah. So if I talk about my college journey after that, uh, I was in multiple societies in semester one, in semester two, and even, even in second year. First year, I got into union, even though our union isn't uh, associated with DUSU, the Delhi University Student Union. Uh, but it gave me a lot of experience in a sense that we got to organize a lot of events that were on a larger scale. And you get to know about the logistics. You know, in your head, you think and you plan stuff. But when it actually comes to executing it, it takes a lot of strength and it takes a lot of teamwork. And I think that is something I learned with Union. 
uh, we organized the fest we organized so many other events and it was it was a really really good experience and then i was also in uh economist that is the editorial board of economics department i think if there's anyone who is just starting college and watching this i tell them that one thing that helps a lot is networking and communicating what got me through college is my seniors i mean they had always been there and every doubt i ever had they were there to help and then even in societies when you interact with them you learn a lot and that is what happened in economics i interacted with a lot of you actually interviewed one of them as well and it was really it, it felt like a proud moment watching yeah her. yeah i've so. interviewed quite a few people from kalindi college and i'm very happy to have done it all of them are outstanding including you so go ahead oh uh, that was the co- i was the co-editor in economics in the first year and then i got to write an article but more than that the webinars or the seminars that we used to do the collaborations that we did the speaker sessions all of them were very insightful and i think that is what got me into academic reading i have always been into reading but it was more like fiction and and uh, novels but uh, when coming to college felt like you are in a in a hub of so many intellectual people witty people who are always there talking some about some world issue and you feel like you need to learn that too and i think that got me into academic reading and being more aware of, about the uh, world and uh, global issues and everything so economics helped me a lot and then second year as well i continued to be a part of economics and then i also um <clears throat> took up a position in the de- uh, department society and in placement cell i think placement cell is just it gives you a reality check on the job market and yeah. then you want to work out because it uh, because it's hard to acquire jobs and i think it was yes it has been a good experience so yeah i think that's about college um i think my seniors and the societies have been a huge part of uh, my college life so far along with that our professors so one i i have always been pretty outgoing and i talk to everyone and i talk about everything and i think that is something i suggest that students should do because it helps a lot even with linkedin and everywhere if i uh, i have never shied away from reaching out so i think that has helped a lot throughout or uh, since 12 so i think yes yeah that was college and then i i joined this ngo that is it's it's an ngo that works on small scale it's raise india foundation but uh, i i am i i did not just join it as a volunteer but rather as as someone who works in the admin team so uh, since it's a small organization i got to learn about everything i am still learning about everything i I've, i've been with them for a year now and uh, whether it's how how the world works uh, what are the uh, logistics behind pulling off any event what are you know there's content there's social media marketing that is going on right now and then of course there's the research work the field work and when we go out to communities and we interact with them we there is so much more than what we see on the surface and we get to learn about that and then uh, i think sir it's the best team i could ask for because uh, mm-hmm. the team is of more elder people uh, but they consider me as someone who is equal to them and they give me the space to talk about my ideas or the resource that i have conducted and then when i get to visit the places where we work uh, the ngo mostly works on education and disaster management and menstrual hygiene and i personally oh, we we will be starting a new project about animals because i think that is something that comes from my heart and i have always wanted to work for okay. space mm-hmm. but at the same time i think education and then we interact with these little kids who have such huge aspirations so today only uh, we were talking about how there is this contrast between students or between children who come from different backgrounds 
one child you would interact with and you would ask them, you know, where do you want to be in five years or what do you plan on doing with your future? And their answer would be, you know, I want to be a doctor or I want to be a teacher somewhere. And then there's another child you interact with that's there out there on the road. And uh, their answer would be, you know, I just want new clothes. I just want clothes that are wearable. Or I want a, I want a pair of slippers, you know, or maybe a good meal in a day. So I think that's something that really breaks my heart, but at the same time motivates me to do more. Uh, as a child, I have always been really ambitious. And my mother always told me, you know, if you want to conquer the world, go ahead. We are there for you. But at the same time, do not forget that there are people out there who need you. And once you are done fulfilling your needs, you need to make sure that you are helping the others who cannot fulfill their needs. And I think it's actually because of her how I even got into the NGO. So initially, it was it was her dedication that got me into like got me the idea of always getting into doing some social work. But then she joined this NGO initially, and then uh, through her I met the director, and then I joined it. So. Yeah, uh, I think it motivates me a lot to not only uh, make myself financially stable at some point, but to take care of the people around. And it's been it's been a very huge experience of my life or how I have shaped in the last two years. College has been a completely different experience, but I think this was also something that shaped me into who I am in the last two years. So we do a lot of field work. And uh, if I talk about a particular event that I I think will always stay with me, it would be in Delhi. Last year, Delhi uh, Yamuna crossed higher levels and Delhi, uh, it hit flood. So we uh, went to East Delhi where all the people, there were people who were from middle income families also. And they had livelihood, they had their houses, but they it had been they had been displaced. And now there they were uh, seven thousand families were displaced and the shelters that were provided to them weren't even half of what they needed. And so we were there and we were talking to them and we were of course we were providing resources and helping them out. But at the same time the conversations that we shared, it uh it lasts an impact impact. So uh I think yes, it's one of the activities that I wanted to show, but we often do them. I think yes, uh, that is pretty much about my life. This so is what, what did you so what did you do for those seven thousand families? So when we, we initially we took food packets, dry ration as we call them, and uh, uh, water, clean drinking water, and this stuff with us. Uh, but uh, when we reached there, they also talked about how they needed fans. And mosquito repellents, because since the areas are not very clean, and uh, uh, I mean, there were so many other organizations who had already provided them with food. What they needed was other stuff, clean clothes, uh, as I told you, fans and mosquito repellents. So then we made another round, and those were the supplies that we took with us the second time. So, yeah, and then uh, uh, the displacement problem, that was a more bigger problem. So for that, what we do is we connect them with organizations or with government that can help them. Since it's not something that we can do on our scale, so we connect them with people who can help them. And then uh, it's between, like, we kind of just uh, take part as a uh, someone who connects them and then they uh, help them out. Okay. It's very, very practical. And it shows the importance of actually going to the field. Because what you think yeah. when you're sitting at home is not what's out there. So you took something and then you realize that's not what they want. There's something else, right? So field work is very important and you need to really be there to understand the reality. And I'm glad you did that and it has opened your eyes in this way. Okay, what else? So what do you do for fun? I mean, these are all socially very important things that you are doing, but there must be some fun activities also. And maybe you can share. I'm a very social person. So if someone asks me, do you like traveling? Do you want to go somewhere? And 
oftenly my reaction is you know just let's sit and let's talk and just tell me what's going on with your life and you know we'd play a game or something so i think i have uh, i rather enjoy good company so i think that is something i do for fun i say i spend time with my family or my friends or i watch netflix i think it's my guilty pleasure i am a huge fan of watching cinematics and just everything that i could take in whether it's thrillers or it's romantics or it's sci-fi everything i love watching stuff and reading as well currently i am reading book thief uh it's an amazing book so for some reason i think death has a certain temptation to it that is what attracts me towards the cruel science and this book as well the book is narrated by death itself so <clears throat> yeah i have been doing that recently it's really fun okay wonderful so you have a very balanced life and a very hard working life you know you're taking on things that you don't have to take on but you are interested and focused and you're doing a lot <laughs> and i'm sure you're also doing i mean you know the actuarial is on top of the economics so it looks like uh, you are achieving a lot and i'm glad to know that because you know the image people have is that you know young people all they do is insta and facebook <laughs> you know and but i know it's not true but i just want to give everybody a chance to say that that look yeah we also do insta and facebook right nobody's above it <laughs> we do it but that's not it what is it is what you are doing you know having a life of your own and achieving things and with your family support going out and helping others so i'm very happy to hear all this and anything else you want to add Well, I think again, if any, if there's anyone who's my age or younger than me, and they're watching this, I just say that uh, there are two things actually that I really wanted to say. I thought of it. One is to just go get it. I mean, I, there are friends that I speak to, and sometimes there are things that they want, but there are there are they are not working out. So I just say that when you are young, no one would come. to help you or to make way for you it's you who's got to do it you'll always you might get help you might not but if there is something you want from life go get it and second is that things might not always pan out the way uh, we want i am honestly so nervous right now about cs1 the first exam that i gave for actuarial i don't know how it will work out but i think being patient and not giving up is equally important because sometimes things work out in their own way i mean i had given up on actuarial and then it just out of nowhere it again came into my life and it it worked out so i think that is something i do want to say that it's it's okay when things don't work out it's okay to take rest but just not give up so okay yeah there's, there's a very Uh, good of you to share but any tips you could give for students in 11th and 12th because you are st- not so far from them how you you, you know you see your friends how they made decisions and all and maybe those younger people will lead will be helped by some tips from you so go ahead i think thorough research is very important listening and understanding what you want to study and then doing a thorough research about it because there are so many options out there so many options that people are not aware about yet and there are so many new opportunities that a person could acquire if they know about it so talking to as many people as you can and researching i thought we have so many open resources right now that could help you understand uh you know if you, if you're interested in economics what are the fields that you could go in it just doesn't always end at economics honors in du there are other organizations out there there are other uh, courses out there so maybe a thorough research is very important and if you if you're unable to do it yourself maybe talk to people who can help about it that is very very important and then second i think uh, the the entrance exam uh, i understand i mean w- once you have gotten a hang of it tier 1 tier 2 colleges don't matter but initially It, if you can you should work really really hard and get 
to an organization get to a university that is good that is good in the sense of <clears throat> job uh, career opportunities that it will provide you or the exposure that it would provide you uh, i personally feel that i chose to go for exploring or i choose to uh, study for masters from second year or or do the ngo work or do everything for one another reason and that is i feel that just a graduation degree from kalindi college wouldn't land me a job that i look for and maybe if i was in a better organization i'd have better opportunities better exposure and a better chance at getting a good placement so i think these are the two things i'd suggest entrance tests are very very important and uh, thorough research okay wonderful anything else you want to add here for some yes, final sir, thoughts think, huh? i have said a lot and i think a uh, a uh, uh, it is uh, i don't i wouldn't want to add anything else okay good so then let's end it here i'll be back with another young person or an expert soon bye till then bye everybody